What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video we're about how to read and understand video scopes that are incredibly useful tools when you're doing color correction. Now let's get started. Now if you enjoy these videos and you want to see more like it, please subscribe to the channel because I'm constantly creating new content. So if you head up here into the source panel, I have a few different video scopes that are tools that I use when I do color correcting. And if you don't see these, I'm going to close this out to show you how to find them. So now you just have your normal, regular source panel. If you come up to window, and come down where it says Lumetri Scopes, you can just keep it here. You don't have to close it down. So every time you reopen this, it'll be locked in there. Now there's three different scopes that I use out of five total. And I'm going to show you to access those if you want to change them, if you want to only use one or two or use all five, it's up to you. So they're just tools to find out what your current image is. Once you adjust that image, if you make it brighter or darker, this will adjust accordingly. So you can use these as guides and boundaries to know when you have a correctly colored image. If you come down here in the tool, little wrench icon and click on it, you're going to see a list of the five different features. So these are the three that I have. I have the vector scope, I have the Parade RGB, and I have the waveform Luma. Another way you can do it instead of having to come down here all the time, if you just right mouse click, you're gonna have the exact same options. And if you uncheck them, one will disappear. So if I uncheck the Parade, it deleted it from the bottom. If I wanna add that, I'll go back and re-add that. Now it does matter what order you add them. So if I delete this, and then I add it back again, it's gonna now throw it on the bottom. So I like to have it the way I had it before because the RGB, the three different windows for the colors I like to have on bottom utilizes more of the space. So I'm gonna unclick that, unclick that, and then add the vector scope next, and then add the parade at the bottom. Now within these windows, if you right mouse click, there's two different sections here. So like the parade, which is the bottom, you can change it to different colors, or the waveform, you can do the same thing. So say the waveform, you wanna have the red, blue, and green represented up in here also, you can have that. But that's why I have these two separate because this focuses on the different red, blue, and green color channels. And this normally for me, I like to have it represent the Luma, just the, the light, the dark, the contrast. And then this one over here, the vector scope, that focuses on you and saturation. So kind of my order of workflow is I start focusing to get the brightness and the darkness correct first. So if something's underexposed, I try to get it to brighten up. If it's overexposed, I try to bring it down and balance that out first. And then after I've kind of balanced out the light, the dark, and the contrast, I then move to the color channels. Then I'll focus on the red, the blue, and green. So if something's a little too warm or a little too cold, I'll try to correct that here. And then once I have that finished, I then the last thing I'll work on is the U and saturation, which is this vector scope up here. So that's the general order I like to work in. You can do it however you want, it's up to you. Now, as far as reading them, and seeing the difference, let's head back over here to the light and the dark. This window from here to here is represented the same as the window from here to here for the red, and then starting again from here, the green to here, and the same thing here to here. It represents here to here. So in the Luma, which is the light, the dark, and the contrast, that's representing the image we have to the left of the lady speaking at the podium. Now you'll notice as I move it, it kind of changes. So every frame it's left on this represents those values in all three scopes. So say we want to make sure the whites are represented as bright enough. The whitest white is 100 here. The darkest black, video black, is zero. As you slide the playhead across, you can see it change. Certain things don't change. So remember I said left to right? So right here, the whole time I'm moving it, this doesn't really change. And the reason for that is here in the video, it's this section right here. The chairs don't move the wall doesn't move, and all the information here doesn't necessarily change. Even when you come down into the, the red channel and the green channel and the blue channel, you'll notice it doesn't change there because in the shot, it doesn't change. Let me go through that again. You can see the line, nothing crosses it, nothing comes over, it doesn't change. So here the black you can see represents the chairs here, and there's not a white because there's no white here. It's more of a gray wall, kind of a dim wall mid-tone. So that's where it's representing right here. And there's not a lot in the middle because it's just black, brown. So just by me looking at this, by telling by the top half, it definitely needs to be brightened up. The whites need to be a little brighter. The mid-tones need to be pulled up a little bit. It just is missing a lot. It has a lot more down here in the dark section, but it's missing a lot. So when we go to correct that, I will definitely brighten this up as a whole and stretch it out and give it more contrast. Now, if we come down to the RGB for the same video, it actually looks to be pretty even. You can see here, there's a slightly little bit more red than blue, so you kind of tweak that a little bit, but overall, it stays pretty balanced. So the color, the red, the green, and the blue channels are all pretty balanced. Now, if I come up to the vector scope, this represents the U 
and the saturation. So the saturation is anything from this middle point, which is desaturated, which is black and white. And then all the way out here is overly saturated, just indulgent like crazy. And then as far as the U, this kind of powder coat, wherever the image is, it's directing you where the colors are. So this is red, magenta, blue, cyan, green, and yellow. So depending on the image, this will be kind of spread out and blown a certain direction, letting you know how much the color value is in that specific frame. So if this is a black and white video, this little dust powder would be just dead centered. It wouldn't be stretched out at all. If it was overly saturated, it'd be all these colors would be pushing out further. Uh, one thing to note is this line here, you'll notice here, this represents the skin tone line. Regardless of the race, this is generally the, the line you wanna follow as far as skin tones. And then as far as saturation, you don't wanna go too far because it'll just be oversaturated and the skin looks funny when it's oversaturated. These little lines here, this little halfway line, these are kind of boundaries. More or less, anytime you cross that line, it's just too saturated. It's kind of like a safety window. Um, obviously, it's up to you with your video, with your creative choice, but traditionally speaking, you wanna stay inside these windows so it doesn't look oversaturated. Now I'm gonna go to a couple different videos to show you how these values will change drastically depending on the video. So let's go to this next video I have. Right away when you look at it, it looks very dark, it looks very blue, even just the tone, the, the cast has like a blue cast to it. It doesn't seem balanced. And there's not a lot of grays. It's like it's super white and then dark and a couple mid-tones. So if we head over here to the first window, just to the Luma, which represents the dark, the light and so on, you can notice here, the darks are all the way to zero, which is black. And then even though the whites aren't to 100, they're definitely combined to the top. So that represents the sky. The sky is not pure white, so that's why it's not reading pure white. But the contrast, there's definitely not a lot here in the middle. It's either all to the dark or it's all to the lighter side of this image. So it definitely needs to be able to be less contrast. You can even tell here, it's just really harsh. It's not a smooth blend. And as far as the blue cast, when you come down in the RGB section, you can clearly see that the blues are represented much bigger. Compared to the reds, you can see it like goes up. These are not on the waves. So this is like 60-ish, 60 to barely 70. And this is what, 80 to 93. So the blues are definitely much higher. So color correction, this is saying we wanna bring these blues down and we wanna raise the reds up to try to make this balanced. Now on that same note, if we go to something that's more extreme the other way, let's go to this next video. This is very flat. The blacks are not black, the whites are not white, and everything is just kind of muted in the middle. So if we come over here to the Luma panel, there's definitely nothing close to the 100, which is the white. And even the blacks, come down the blacks, there's not, there's no true blacks. Everything is just smushed in the middle, it's very flat. Now the colors aren't, there's no specific color cast, there's not really, there's a little bit too much blue. But overall it's not grossly overbalanced like the last shot. There's no color whatsoever in the lighter tones, same here. And then in the bottom, there's no darkness. So we definitely want to separate that and add more contrast to stretch these out. And also when you come over to Luma, you'll notice here, because there's not a lot of color, it's very desaturated, everything is nice and tight in here. But if I was to bump up the saturation, these colors, like the green, for example, in the trees would stretch out more, come this way. So like I said, these are all just tools to kind of give you guides when you are color correcting to make sure you have an accurate balance. And these are also very helpful when you have different clips and after you've adjusted one clip that's perfect and then you want to match another shot and you want the same values, even though they look similar, this will help you fine tune each color to match when you're matching shots. Anyway, I hope this helped you just kind of read and understand the basic values of these color scopes. And as I said before, they are tremendous value and guides when you're color correcting. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to the channel. That being said, have a great day. Later.